A long-anticipated three-digit suicide prevention and mental health crisis hotline will be created in Canada. The CRTC announced the 988 hotline will come online next year. The CBC's Sarah Galashin is on the story and joins us now. So, Sarah, what more can you tell us about this hotline? Well, Andrew, as you say, it's not until next year. And in fact, it's, it's more than a year away. We're looking at this coming online at end of November 2023. But once it does, uh, what it will mean is that anyone who is experiencing a mental health crisis, thinking that they might hurt themselves, might hurt others, they will have a three-digit number, 988. They'll be able to call and be quickly put in touch with the appropriate mental health services. Uh, they can also text that uh, 988 number, it's same, uh, same connection to mental health services, and those will be provided to them free of charge, which is important to mention here. Now, advocates say that the need for this is uh, very clear if you just consider the numbers. Health Canada out today estimating that um, an average of 12 people a day in Canada are dying from suicide. And we know that over the last two years, because of pandemic lockdowns and restrictions, uh, financial uh, situations that people are facing, that those numbers uh, and the, the mental health situation that many people are dealing with has gotten that much worse. It was Conservative MP Todd Doherty uh, from British Columbia who has really championed this 988 initiative. He brought the motion forward to Parliament. It was December 2020 that it was unanimously voted on in favour. Um, today, uh, upon the CRTC announcing that they are moving forward with 988, he posted a video to Twitter very emotional, in fact. Uh, he has a personal connection to suicide. He lost a friend at the age of 14 to suicide. And uh, I want to play you a little bit of what he posted to Twitter today. Bringing 988 to Canada, giving Canada a simple three-digit suicide uh, hotline. And I'm moved to tears. I'm thankful that we, uh, for everybody that brought their voice forward to get this done. It's so needed and um, just a heartfelt thanks. He indicated some frustration that it has taken as long as it has to get to, to this point, uh, the, just initiating the 988. Uh, in the U.S., we know they already have put in 988 as a national hotline back in July, and we know that Canadian authorities, Andrew, are going to look to that U.S. experience and learn from it as we move forward here in Canada. So in the meantime, where can people turn to if they need help right now? You know, Andrew, there's a number of numbers and a lot of digits in them to remember, and therein lies the problem. But given the length of time we're looking at until 988 comes into play in Canada, very much worth repeating for those who, who might need them, the numbers that you can call should you be experiencing a mental health crisis. Canada Suicide Prevention Service, uh, top, of, top of the list there, and we're putting the numbers on the side of your screen. If you're in Quebec, similar service, but there is a different number to know, uh, especially if you're in need of a French service there. And then, of course, there's the kids help phone uh, and I'll just read that number out 1-800-668-6868 also a live chat line uh, option if you go to kidshelpphone.ca for any uh, anyone who is young and in need of uh, mental health services. All Andrew? right Sarah thank you that is the CBC's Sarah Galashin. So as we just heard the CRTC announced that the 988 hotline will come online in the fall of next year something that advocates have been calling for for some time including my next guest Stacey Ashton. She's the chair of the BC Crisis Line Network and joins us from Vancouver. Stacey, thank you for taking the time today. No, thanks for having me. So how important is it for Canadians to have a three-digit simple 988 hotline when in a crisis? Yeah, it's really helpful. I think uh, the the ease of just being able to remember 988 is is key for people in a crisis to actually be able to get the help that they need. And we've been working towards this since 2006, the idea of, yes, there are suicide hotlines across Canada. Um, there are a network of crisis centers that are on the ground ready to answer those calls. Uh, and it's just easier for the caller if there's one simple number to remember. And we've seen calls to move away from police wellness checks. Do you think that this mm -hmm. is a step in the right direction? So how, how will it be different uh, in the future, in, in November of 2023, when someone dials 988? Yeah, well, what we're hoping for is uh, is the 988 is kind of like the front door. Uh, but when you kind of get through the front door, the idea is, is that your call is going to be rooted to the closest call responder to you. That will allow us to connect you up with provincial pathways and local pathways to care. 
Uh, and also you'll be talking to people who are kind of from where you're uh, from where you are understand your community understand your life a little bit better that's really important so a lot of that work is happening between the federal government and the provincial government to make sure that the crisis lines actually have the capacity to answer the additional calls that are going to come through when it's easier for people to access service and so let's talk a little bit more about that because it, right now, right, if you call 911, there is a first responder response that just goes out and it has to go out. So that's, that's what's different here, that that wouldn't necessarily happen, that the police wouldn't necessarily arrive at your home if that's not what's needed based on the circumstances. Yeah, in BC, we've been in conversations with uh, 911, BC Ambulance, the Provincial Health Authority, the Ministry of Public Safety, the Ministry of Mental Health. All of those conversations are around uh, making sure that if it's a crisis line that we can handle and de-escalate over the phone, that that crisis call comes through the phone. So we're we're we take community-based calls all the time. So the the challenge is just rooting through the other uh, the other services. So 911 in BC, we're looking at doing police, fire, uh, ambulance, mental health. So the caller at that point can identify as if it's a mental health crisis and flow through. So that would mean uh, with 988 in place that callers that called 911 would be able to access a mental health op option, but they'd also be able to access it just by remembering 988. So how is that better or how do you think it would be better to have someone on the phone walking through a mental health crisis rather than someone arriving at your home? Mm -hmm. Well, what we're trying to do on the crisis lines is keep people in control of their lives as much as we can. So one of the things that happens when you're in a crisis is you feel really out of control. So if we can spend 15, 20 minutes, a half an hour on the phone with you, helping you figure out helping you stabilize your emotional reaction to the crisis, that gets you back in control. And then you can start thinking about what you wanna do and we can do some collaborative planning with you so that, uh, and then we can do follow-up calls as well to make sure that things are going as planned. Um, when you have a police response or, or any kind of in-person response that you're not necessarily asking for or expecting, your control over the situation really it disappears pretty quickly um, and that can that just makes a crisis worse it just escalates the crisis instead of keeping you in control that's what we do and we have a team in, in uh, BC we have a team of 450 staff and volunteer crisis responders who are well trained to handle those calls and help people with those kinds of conversations and we de-escalate 98 percent of our calls without in-person response Stacey, appreciate you taking the time and, <clears throat> excuse me, walking us through this. Thank you very much. Yeah, you're welcome. That's Stacey Ashton from the BC Crisis Line Network, and we reached her in Vancouver.